Let's be honest, people love doodling on millionaires. And who am I to stop the people from giving them what they want? Today I'm reacting to Jubilee's video, Do All Millionaires Think the Same? And the reason I am most and foremost is because Graham Stephan is my boy, Mr. Real Estate Extraordinaire. So I wanna see how he answers these questions. He's in this Jubilee video, and if you know Jubilee, they make great, exciting videos here and there. So I'm pretty excited to get this video. I'm just gonna give you guys my reaction and see if we can uh, doo-doo on these millionaires together. So let's start from the beginning. Bam. Like and subscribe. Somebody that was growing up broke. I disagree with that. You can mow lawns for a few months and make like a few thousand dollars. You know how many lawns I'm gonna have to mow? It's a lot of lawns. He's a multimillionaire. Please welcome Tim Sykes. The key to my success is just working hard, like 18 to 20 hour days every day of my life and having no life, but having a lot of money. You can already tell he's gonna be the annoying one. I think it's consistency, waking up every day, doing things that I need to do, not just because FBA. I want to do them, but because I have to do them. Three years ago, I was serving Captain and Coke as a server. I feel like a lot of people think that this happens overnight when it's really been a lot of work. I started a fat freezing business. What? What? Was that like Alien vs Predator? What was that? And family, and it grew into like a crazy thing. What's up, you guys? It's Graham here. I think it's so important that you live below your means and My boy. and really focus on what's most important to you. Yo, I never hit the like button until Graham told me to, man. That guy is the like button master. I think millionaires get a bad rap. They try really hard to serve other people. I'm self-made, all right. So you guys already know how Jubilee works. They gotta go if they agree or not agree. Ooh, one person not self-made. That was, was in real estate. I didn't have anyone in my family that you know had millions of dollars. And so for me, I do remember being like 15, 16 years old, having 20 bucks and working part-time after school and like saving away all that money. And then I used that money to get my real estate license. I barely graduated high school. I never went to college, uh, two divorced parents, so I should not have become wealthy statistically. But I believe that I put in the work and I really wanted something and I was really determined and I really enjoyed what I do and that uh, you know, accumulated to where I am today. I literally started from the bottom. I'm not saying that I was ever homeless or anything, but I did grow up in a single family household. We ended up sharing like a, a one bedroom <coughs> apartment with five people living in one bed. Living through those struggles really did put into perspective that I, I just wanted more out of life. So I feel like for here, if you don't want to seem like you're an asshole, okay, straight up booty hole, you got to have the most fire self-made story of all time. I hope they thought about that before they come up here. No one wants to hear from the inherited trust fund baby talk about how he turned one million to two million. So let's hope they all got their rags to riches stories. So I went out there and I did whatever it took to build my wealth. And even though all odds were stacked against me, like I failed out of business um, administration, my counselor told me I would never make it in business, but I took that uh, and it lit a fire under me to prove her wrong almost. Yeah, baby I slay. Like personally, self-made has to be some that somebody that was growing up broke, in my opinion. Like you got it from the bottom and I didn't get it from the bottom. I disagree with that. I don't think you need to come from straight from the bottom. Like I started with a few thousand dollars. I know a lot of people who started their own businesses with a few thousand dollars. <laughs> this guy said I started with a few thousand dollars and now I'm here. <laughs> what? A few thousand is more than what I had. So in but my mind, like a few thousand gonna isn't going to make or break your business, like your life. Like you can't. The, with, Zero let's dollars? Say, let's say you start with $1,000. I still believe you're self-made. Even 10000 even 20000 because you're not truly like a even six figures or seven figures. I'm broke and I live at mom's house with $0. You're in a way better yeah, you position can, You me. can mow lawns for a few months okay. and make $2,000. Like there's ways you know how many make, lawns I'm going to have to mow? There's a lot of lawns, but that is self-made. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Hold up. Hold up. Um, yo, I see what my boy Timothy's saying. He's saying if you have $1,000... It's not a hundred thousand. It's not a million dollars. It's still, it's still an accomplishment to make that much money. But that ain't broke, bro. That ain't. It's gotta make me break my headphones. That ain't broke. You know how much people don't even have a thousand dollars. Man, I was like broke my whole life. Like no money ever. If I had like two hundred dollars in my bank account, I I feel like I would be rich. So to say you got a couple of thousand dollars and turn that to a million's like you are gonna. Be it's a lot of people laugh. Come on, cuz. 
I have to go with my girl Christiana on that one. There's a lot of people who don't have a thousand dollars, and if even if they do, like a thousand dollars just isn't yours to spend. Like a lot of people got to support their brothers and sisters if they want to go to prom or get some food, or support their mom with the rent, or help out the auntie with their car repairs. Like you can't just spend a thousand dollars on your business. What kind of selfish person would you be if you have a family struggling? So, Timothy, yo, you lost like everybody on that one. <laughs> like I can already tell this guy's gonna be a savage. This whole thing. Come on. Did they just high five? Being broke. I've been broke before. Like me and my husband have been broke many times in like some water. But we've never been poor. And even like a long time ago when I lived in a one bedroom apartment with my family, we were never poor. I mean, I was happy. Like I had pudding. We went to like parks and stuff. I never felt poor. When I was seven years old, I got kicked out and moved into my grandparents' garage. And so I was poor mentally and I was um, broke financially. And I had to take care of myself at a very young age. So for a decade I was running a pool company in order to eventually gain the opportunities to ultimately move that ball down the court obviously so but were you happy in I mean I wasn't garage? not not really right because there was a lot of stuff going on and like I'm, I'm living in a garage and I'm growing up and I had to not only become rich fi financially but also mentally I know what it's like to have everything and lose it all so for me my parents split when I was young my family was broken my mom had to then support two children my dad had some nasty habits with gambling and lost everything so he had a lot of debts that my mom ended up having to be chased for and basically I was 12 years old when I got my first job going door-to-door -door sales selling newspaper subscriptions and I had to bust my ass off to help my mom so for me I feel like we all start from somewhere and we go through certain motions because it builds character I like that I'm jealous of you guys I wish I had that mindset like I travel to third world countries to kind of see what it's like but I still can't put myself like totally in that spot I feel like again broke and poor are two different things like I grew up in a two-parent home I you know went to prom in a Bentley like I grew up really really great but then I hit 20 and I moved out with some boy in this. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? Okay, so she said she grew, she went to prom in a Bentley, but she's, she said she knows what it means to be poor. Okay, I gotta keep listening to this. The situation got very, very domestic violence. You know, I was living Ooh. in a penthouse and I'm sorry, I got too much pride. I wasn't gonna go back home. And you know, I'm like black and blue, like getting locked in like closets, like really, really toxic stuff. So that for me was very, very poor. Now, did it slingshot me to six figure a month income? Yes. But in that state of mind and in that environment, I felt like I was really poor. Like I looked beat up and my direct deposit was not going to fix a black eye, you know, like, mm. you know what? So she says she was rich, but like she had very poor aspects of her life. You know, her family situation or uh, relationship situation was poor. I get what she's saying, but I think, you know, they're literally talking about money in this. She's trying to make the distinction between poor and broke, but I think, you know, poor, they're talking about money. So, like, what are you trying to do, sis? You should be at the far left if you go into prom in Bentley's and you living in this mansion. Of course, it's, the story's tragic. You know, shout out to my sister. We got to protect our black queens out here. You know what I'm saying? Protect our black queens, you know what I'm saying? So that that's tragic, but I think it didn't really apply to the question they were asking. <laughs> Everyone's like, nah, get your hand like, out my pocket. You, know, you make more money, you obviously do have to pay somewhat more, but I don't feel like we deserve extra things to pay. I'm sorry. And yo, sorry, this poor question got me a little heated too. Cause like, cause like, I, I think the distinction, like a lot of people got to know here is like, everybody starts out with no money. Like everyone doesn't have money, but there's people who are actually poor. Like, you know, I was literally... 27 years old or 26 years old my dad told me that when he was 26 years old he didn't have a fridge growing up like that's some poor stuff you don't got a fridge like like how do you get your bologna sandwiches like where do you put your milk if you don't got no fridge right like that's poor right <laughs> these people talking about just not having money or sharing beds maybe sharing beds is a poor thing maybe that not everyone does that but um I think everyone there started very lower financially, but poor, I think that's, I don't know, to me that's something different. I don't know their situations. I only know what they said. Anyways, let's keep going. 
just because we have more money. Like we shouldn't be looked to as like a fund, you know, from the government or someone else who just feels like, oh, you have more money, you should pay more in taxes. I just feel like there should be a little bit more freedom with it because it's really, really stressful. And I feel like a lot of businesses fail in the first three years because of taxes, not because they're bad at business, not because they're bad at managing money, but because they're not prepared to do everything by the book. I mean, I kind of agree with that. Taxes are super complicated. Like when you worked in a company, they automatically take taxes off, but you'll see all these different rappers who make a ton of money and like anything you make over a certain amount, 50% of it's tax. So you got to pay that at the end of the year. And a lot of people, they don't separate that money out to make sure they have it. They actually spend the money that they should use on taxes. So a lot of people get crushed. Like if you make $10 million a year, 5 million of it's taxes, but you spent eight, that means you owe 3 million in taxes and you don't even have that money because you spent it. So I, I can see what she's saying there. Yeah, I just don't appreciate it when big companies who sell a lot of their services like in the US and then they have some like Ireland uh, tax status where they're getting out of it like Apple and Amazon and these big companies that theoretically should pay billions in taxes while it's us average people who are really supporting the government. Okay, Timothy. There should be a little less inequality there. Amazon paid zero dollars in taxes. Do you see Bezos yeah. donating to Australia for the wildfires? He donated six hundred ninety thousand dollars. Yeah. And he makes an average of two hundred million dollars per day. Yeah. And he put out a whole press release and I'm just like Come on, dude, like, yeah. give a little more. To be fair, they have created a lot of jobs for people. I actually sell on Amazon, so through Amazon FBA. He's provided an opportunity for people like me to yeah. make a living for myself, yeah. to be You're able to start a business, Amazon. you know, <laughs> online and to be able to make internet money. So, like, to have yeah. that freedom and, like, whether we think that he needs to give more or not, I mean, that's really up to him what he does with his money. Yo, see, this girl's smart. And let me tell you why she's smart. Bezos is worth $100 billion, okay? $100 billion. You just don't talk smack about someone worth $100 billion, all right? They got, like, snipers in alleys. They probably hired their whole police force in your town. Like, she try to stay alive. She, you smart. That's 200 IQ move. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> Bro, if they don't all get their butts to the right. Okay, this dude right here, he's lying. <laughs> like, get out of here. Mercedes. It was like a 90 grand car and he added like a 200 grand car. And I'm like, why did you do that? Like, you don't need, you don't need to do that. He's like, well, I mean, I could, so why not? Like, I want to, it's fun. I'm like, you can't even drive it to the grocery store. Like, you can't use this car for anything. I mean, and I grew it, up wanting cars. Like, I, my whole bedroom was like plastered with cars on the wall. And then yeah. when I could actually buy it, it was like, it's so fun, a, right? Well, it was fulfilling a childhood dream. It wasn't even about the car, it was the challenge. Yeah. Then once I had all the cars, the, the thrill is gone, so yeah. I don't need it. So I, I can't hate that. We all have like dreams and chase those dreams, whatever they are. Maybe they don't cost that much. But I mean, not everything's materialistic. Like when I started making money, yeah, I changed my body. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that's what everyone chest. does. I went and cleared my skin. Yeah, I went and got tattoos. <laughs> Yo, she she sounds like Cardi. I got a bag and fix my teeth. I can't hit on that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. go and get hair extensions. Like, I've definitely purchased things in the past. That, that were cool and it was because I could, but as time's gone along for me, I've realized so many times that every time I hit the goal or the destination or the target, I realized that the journey was so much more fun. And, it, and as I've achieved more success and built more companies, it, it's almost every time now where I get there and I'm like, man, the journey was actually funner than the destination. I'm kind of over here with you. Yeah, right? Yeah, because like, <laughs> I, I used to buy a lot of bags. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, and then once I got there, it was kind of like, I don't have a man, I don't have kids. What am I doing? But the question wasn't like, what do you think about what's important now? It's like, have you done it in the past? You can't change your past. If you do, are we doing that? Mm -hmm. like, what do you think about Timothy the keeping it real. Like, I'll change, I don't need Timothy it. keeping it real. So I've filled my childhood dreams, now I'm good. Yo, yo, I, I have a feeling Timothy doesn't give a fuck. This guy doesn't care, man. He's just gonna say what's on his mind. <laughs> Okay, if you don't get all the way to the right for this question, this is easy. Come on. Okay, who's that girl's name? Linda? Okay, who's that? Who's this girl's name? Oh my God. Inequality is definitely not a problem. Like, a homeless person has rose to fame overnight. I mean, if we're talking about inequality, like... Okay, sorry, I gotta, I gotta put it back. What'd she just say? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> What'd she just say? If we're talking about getting like successful, inequality is definitely not a problem. Like, okay, inequality is not a problem, all right. Like a homeless person has 
rose to fame over and over. I mean, if we're talking about inequality, like with like the country, yeah, like you know that exists. But to become successful, inequality is not a problem. <coughs> what? <laughs> oh, yo, I'm sorry for her. What is she talking about? Inequality is not a problem because why a homeless person has become famous overnight? How many homeless people are become? How much rich people are becoming famous? Most of us can't even name ten billionaires. Like, like becoming famous is not a normal thing. And because a homeless per bro, let me just play this video. I don't even need to talk on this. Hold up. Anyone can make it. Someone has to call her out for this. Is that the Please. Rich are getting richer and the poor are not having access to those means. Well, no, because I feel like my husband, he grew up in like the ghetto of LA. Like he had nothing. He worked at, like, as a dishwasher technician. And now he drives a gold Lamborghini and he had a gold Mercedes and he can buy whatever the hell he wants. You don't need to be like a white guy to make money. You know, like you don't need to grow up in a rich area to make money. There's opportunities everywhere. Anyone can do it if they want to. But Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. So I feel like what she's trying to say is that because an individual, as an individual person living in the U.S., you have opportunities around you. If you use those opportunities, you can do whatever you want and become whatever you want. The problem is that, yes, everyone has the choice of like making these moves in life that can make them more successful. I think the problem is that some of those choices or some of those opportunities is harder for some people to access than it is others. Right. Like, for instance, anyone can win a 100 meter race in the Olympics. It's a little easier when you're Usain Bolt and from birth, you've been faster than everyone else. Like there's some people they could train as hard as they want. They'll not, will never become faster than than Usain Bolt. Right. Like that's just that's just how it is for a lot of things. And putting a more real example in there, like there's there's all these inequality things like. Of course, I'm black, so I know the black example. So, you know, redlining is this practice that happens where like black people, they basically couldn't get houses in certain neighborhoods. And, you know, housing is like the main source of wealth for a lot of people in America. So, of course, if you're a black person, you can't have access to, you know, loans from the bank or you have to go to these certain areas that are more destitute, have worse schools and everything. Then in the future, you get things that happen, such as like the Flint water crisis where like, you know, lead's all in the water. Like, like I wouldn't go to these people in Flint in these neighborhoods where they got lead literally in their water and say, yo, why aren't you guys like, why aren't you guys trying to go to Harvard? Or why aren't you guys like all investment bankers and doctors? Because it's a little harder to study when like there's not as much opportunity. To, I'm going off. Let me just see what else they got to say. No, I don't the statistics, yeah. the statistics though. I think it's definitely doable. Like anybody can do it, but we still are in a day and an age where it's it's not as it's still not that common in the grand scheme of things. Like there's still a lot of people that, like you said, the rich get richer and the poor are either staying the same or not really getting that ahead right now. I feel like there's still just a lot of inequality. I mean, like <coughs> we're all minorities, and you guys are all white. All and then like growing up, if you put me in a fourth grade classroom and I say, show me a millionaire, you say Apple, Amazon. Timothy Sykes, he's rich. And then you're like, okay, show me somebody <laughs> black, show me somebody Asian, show me somebody Spanish. You're gonna be like, it's, it's very Michael limited, Jordan. right? It's extremely gonna, limited. We <laughs> need more examples. I mean, that's so true. Like, every, you know, a lot of black people growing up, we play basketball, we listen to rap, because that's where we see black people, you know, doing, you know, being successful. You didn't see, like, when I was growing up, you didn't see a lot of black doctors, you didn't see a lot of black lawyers, and you didn't have those people in your family. We're just doing like normal jobs. Like I wouldn't even know what a finance manager or a finance analyst or an investment maker did because I have no one in my family just working in an office type job when I was growing up, right? So I know what she's saying here. Like when you have that representation, not only on TV, but in your own family and you like have people there that like, you know, have those normal jobs and show you, oh, this is a job here. You can make 90K. As black people, we, you know, a lot of us only know like, we can make a million dollars playing basketball. We don't know like what the upper middle class people are doing to make that shmula, baby. My privilege has allowed me to become. Ooh, okay, okay, this is an interesting one. Okay. Mmm. Democratizes everything.
everything. I mean, I learned everything about stock trading on the internet, and, and many of us take advantage or capitalize on uh, you know, things that are in the market, and the internet allows us to become experts. Would you say so. the internet's a privilege, though? No. I mean, you want to get like into some entries, like it's a privilege to be alive during this time in history but where we have the internet. internet, just in a sense, if you're broke, you not you may not have it. So you have to like you can walk get free to Wi-Fi. You, have to walk you to can Starbucks. beg on the street and you can get But I have to can, walk there. It's not a You could be paralyzed and you could like push yourself. There's a way to oh my God. Yes. You get on the internet. The internet, I think, allows you to achieve anything. And it doesn't matter if you're in the US, if you're a man or a woman. Well, I feel like that's right. Okay, okay. Okay, so what if your family lives somewhere rural that doesn't have internet? Or what if you're in a community that doesn't have, you know, high speed internet accessible to your house? Or what if your parents just can't afford internet or high speed internet? Or what if you just don't have a laptop? Like, I got my computer, like, you know, I was born in the 90s. I got a computer, I think it was in grade five. We got a PC, and I never had a laptop till, like, university. And we had a family computer that we had to share between seven of us. So, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think someone who had their own laptop and could, like, search all the stuff that they wanted to would be way more. And then you can actually type. Like, I know a lot of people have cell phones and smartphones nowadays, but... You can't really do a lot of like productive type work on a smartphone. There's so much distractions and it's harder to type with just your two thumbs. So it's kind of weird how like I know what he's saying the internet democratizes your stuff, but like the person who has like literally like a like a little desk and a laptop set up as like a teenager, he's gonna have way more advantages in life than like the poor kid whose family can't afford a laptop and ha he has to go to the library to research stuff. Like, I, I just don't, yo, Timothy, my boy, like, I try to root for you, but bro, you seem lost. For internet businesses, like for me, it's more like beauty. Like, for example, right. if I didn't like kind of look good, I'm not trying to be conceited. No one oh, oh, you could see the baby. <laughs> like, for example, you're in stocks. That's not really privilege. You learned how to For example, you're ugly and you don't look as good as me. <laughs> I'm just playing. I know that's what she wanted to say. My privilege has allowed me to make money just in that case, just because it's like a beauty industry. That's it. You know. That so you can create privilege then too, right? Once you gain some momentum in life, it, it becomes easier in a sense, right? It become like you look at the effort. man. I thought he was gonna. You can create privilege too. Once you get some makeup, potential growth of and some boobs and some butt. And once you kind of create privilege a little bit. From what I've found, at least, it, be, it does become a little bit easier. Like, once you're there, though, I mean, it could take 10 years to get there, but eventually... Yo, I like this dude. It doesn't mean you have, you have to start out privileged. For sure, and sometimes it's just... This is normal like stuff. I was in my mom's shoes, and I was actually born in Vietnam and didn't come... To, and she didn't take that chance with her family to leave literally everything behind and come over to Canada. I may not be where I am today because she didn't you know, make that decision to bring our family over. Maybe I would have had to be, be the oh. one to make that decision for my family, and then it's the next generation that basically built off of that. Yep, see, like, I feel like when you're an immigrant, you you understand this, but um, man, when I went to Jamaica to see, like, where my family's come, like, people don't understand, yo, there is no opportunity in Jamaica. Like, like, like it. you have to be so lucky to get out. You either have to have, like, family in the Canada States or somewhere, or you gotta be a playboy and just find yourself a Jamaican wifey or a wifey that's gonna take you out because, yo, there is no, like, you can't just get a job. <laughs> you can't just go to school, like, sometimes, man. Like, like, man, people just don't understand what it's like coming from these different countries. Shout out my girl, Melissa. So it, it really is situational. People judge me because I'm rich. This is an easy far right one. <laughs> okay, Grandma disagrees. Social media is extremely prevalent. So, like being on YouTube or, or Instagram or social media, a lot of it's like perceived. You know, you are constantly getting um, like quote unquote judged. In right. My but opinion. even on social media, it really just depends what you post. It, that's very much I have a, a controlled $30, environment. I watch just for social media. Like right. I don't even. If you ask me what time it is, I check my iPhone. I don't even know if this thing works. But like when you're trying to grow your business, especially for me, like in stock trading, why do you get into stock trading? Is it fun? No, it sucks, but you can make money. So for social media. Hey, 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 stock trading is fun. Okay, stock trading is fun. I have to show it. But even with social media, I mean, if you have a million subscribers on YouTube, 
I think you're rich. Yeah. Because I know yeah. YouTube is writing you a check. I agree. I'm judging you off Direct that. deposit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my point. Like, you don't have to post a flashy watch. You don't have to post a nice car anymore. Like, if I see, you know, a large amount of subscribers on a monetized platform, I know you're getting direct deposit. I know something's keeping your lights on. Now, I'm not judging you in a bad way. Of course, you know, I, I work every day to try to make videos too. But in the same sense, like, we judge people that ask us for money. Money can buy It's kind of Interesting. Like that mentality all over again. Like if you're rich and you're like in a um, domestic violence relationship, like you're not happy, even though you might have money, but that, still a money shot? can buy fun things and looking back, like you're proud of your accomplishments. You're proud of the journey that you took to get to where you are. And in a way it can buy happiness. Money allows you to buy freedom and then freedom gets you the ability to have more time to find what makes you happy. It's not a direct result. But it could be like, let's say your mom or your dad or somebody that had a severe illness, you know, was in the hospital and they had X amount of time to live. Now this person makes you extremely happy and it's gonna cost a million dollars or two million dollars for this surgery that and they need to survive and you save them. Like you quite literally just bought happiness. Now that's not to say that it buys happiness in every area of life. Like but I, it can. But in certain th areas, like yeah, money definitely can buy happiness. My yeah, I agree to this. The house that I bought my parents. Exactly. And I am so grateful and to be able to do that. You were that. serving another person. 100%. Exactly. Right, it's like pouring from an empty cup. You need right. to make sure that you fill your cup before you help other people. And I think it goes back to donating or people expect you to give more because you have more, but really it's not selfish for you to want a lot of money or to want that time freedom. And it really just depends on your definition of happiness. What makes you happy? And we all find that, I guess, reason at different points in our life. Some people figure it out really early on and some people it takes them a lifetime to find out what's what makes them happy. So even though you could have a lot of money, if you don't know what that reason is that drives you to do the things that you do, then really you're just not gonna be happy whether you have money or not. All right, I guess that's the whole video. Um, <laughs> all in all, I'll rank them, okay? I'll rank them from who I think did the worst to the best. So the worst, uh my dude here timothy he's a stock trader so like you know this is the uneducated investor podcast so you know we talk about stocks investing and all that he made us look terrible like absolute monsters my guy's like yo a thousand dollars is all it took for me to make millions of dollars i'm like bro most people don't even have a thousand dollars like you lost me off the rip second worst was linda god damn she's like inequality is not a big problem motherfucker you just answered a question and you just said to everyone that I feel I'm privileged because I look good. Because you look good. You're, you're Not everyone looks good. Yo, go on right now and look at like the, the wealth gap between ugly and rich people. Sorry, ugly and beautiful people, okay? Like, like how are you going to say inequality is not a problem, but you're also going to say you're privileged because you look good? Come on, bro. Third, I'm going to have to give to my... Uh, let's give it to... I think her name's uh, Christina. She said a lot of good things, but she missed me with that. Like, I live poor in a Bentley. Um, you know what? Fourth, or the next one's gonna go to my dude here, just because I don't remember his name, but he gave all solid answers. You know what I'm saying? All of his answers are solid. Uh, second is gonna be Graham. He didn't talk enough, but he's my boy, so I gotta put him up the list. Home team hero representing. And of course, I, I guess number one was Melissa. I honestly didn't even know she was my number one, but she just, everything she made just made said like she just said things that made sense and she's an immigrant. So like, I relate to that. Okay. Uh, that's my reaction. But what you guys think? Did you think that Timothy was a spawn from hell and you tried to like meme this whole thing? Do you think he was a Russian spy and he was just here to give us jokes? Do you think Linda's boyfriend is actually like Bill Gates or something like that? Like she just brought him up 20 times. Uh, let me know and find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, maybe we'll do some reactions more. Anyways, we out. Bye.